Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Christ Like Church midweek message. I pray that you've had a great week, that you are in good spirits, you are in good health. I pray that you're staying safe. I pray that you're staying home. And I pray that all of God's people are staying connected. And so we just want to welcome you here and spend a few moments with you in God's Word. And so we're going to pray and we'll get right into God's Word. So let us bow. Father God, we worship you and honor you and glorify you and thank you, God, for this opportunity to spend time in your word, God, to speak to your people. And God, I pray that you would keep them, keep them safe, God, keep them healthy, God, uh, guide them, guard over their homes, protect them, God, and provide for them, God, as you are always faithful to do, God. Now, God, we ask, Lord, that you would bless this word today, bless your message, that it may truly encourage some, edify them, God, but most of all, glorify you, Master. So I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. I love you. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, John chapter 5. John chapter 5 is where we'll be. And we're going to be starting at the first verse. And so I'm going to read these to you and we'll, we'll go through them as we, as we read. And so this is what the Word of God says. John chapter 5, five verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, one who was, who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and heard that he had been in, his, in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred, while I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which he, he did this, on, on the day in which it took place, was the Sabbath. And all the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick up your mat and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who he was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. This man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Amen. This is the word of God. Well, I just read it all for you, and that's a good thing. And so, once I started reading, I just didn't feel like stopping. So, um, listen, what we have here is we have an invalid. The Bible doesn't say what was wrong with him, but we just assume that he was crippled. Some type of paralysis that kept him from moving. And... Jesus is in Jerusalem doing ministry again. He comes through the sheep gate. And there in Jerusalem, near the sheep gate, the sheep gate is mentioned in the Old Testament. This is the gate where they would usher the sheep in to be slaughtered for sacrifices. So here they are. All these people are laying there. They are laying there crippled. 
They have the blind there. They have the paralyzed there. And they're all around the pool of Bethesda. Bethesda means house of mercy. And so they're there. And there is folklore or some type of, of story that the history books say that all of these people got around this pool and a certain time of day or a certain time of the month, the waters would be stirred. They believed that, in, that God would send down an angel to stir the water. So they would all sit around and wait for the water to start moving and they believed that it had healing properties because the angel stirred the water. So the first one to get in the pool would be healed. And so you have all these people sitting around here day after day, they're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting, they're watching for the pool to be stirred. Now, this is not necessarily true. This just could be some type of a, a superstitious thing that they, they had going around. But somewhere, you may have a text that's, that adds in a note right in the middle that says that the angel would come and stir and they would get in there and be healed. Some scribe added that to the Bible because when they, writ, when they wrote the Bible and they looked back, they did not see it in the original manuscripts. But somewhere along the way, when they begin to, 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 to re write the Bible and put in new manuscripts, they begin to add this in. So they believe that the scribe added it in. So you may have a Bible, a version of the Bible that has this in there, but it's not in mine, but many of them have it and I have read it before. And so this is that superstition that they believe that the angel would stir it. Now understand this, that the pool was supplied by an underground reservoir that would just push water up and sometimes the pressure was higher, so the water would move, they believe, and they thought that as soon as they got in, that they would be healed. And so people laid around day after day, all year long, trying to be healed. I remember we took a trip, me and my wife, to Ochos Rios, Jamaica, and we went to the Dunes River Falls, and so they believed that this river had healing property. And I had just, had a bad ankle sprain from playing basketball. And when I got in it, and we traveled 90 something feet from the bottom of the beach all the way up the river fall, this is something that they do. And the water, when I got out, listen, my ankle really felt better. And they said, this has healing property. But after a while, my ankle started back hurting. And I realized why they thought it had healing property. Because the water, was in the 40s. It was 40 degrees. So I, my ankle the whole time was in freezing water. And when I got out, my ankle was froze. That's why I didn't feel it. It didn't have any healing properties. The water was just cold. But, but I don't know what's to deal with this, with the pool of Bethesda. All I know is they thought that it had healing properties. Everybody sat out. Everybody was there. And those who needed to be healed, they were waiting to get in. They thought when the water moved, it was an angel and they would jump right in and be healed. But there was a man who had that, who was there. He was an invalid for 38 years. That's a very long time to be there. And he would go there every day. And Jesus asked him a question. He said, do you want to get well? And people have been criticizing Jesus for answering this question. In other words, would the man be there if he didn't want to be well? But that's not what Jesus is, is asking. He's asking the man, in other words, do you have any hope left? It's been a long time you've been here. Do you still have hope in you? Do you still think that you can get well? And the man says, you know, I, I can't get in the pool. There's no one to help me. Every time the water moves and I go to get in it, somebody beats me there. Somebody's always faster. Somebody gets my blessing. Listen, there's enough blessings in Jesus Christ to go around. Jesus asked the man, do you want to be well? He didn't ask the man, did you want me to help you in the pool? No, he said, 
do you want to get well? Because even when there's no one there to help you, God will help you. Even when there's no one who, it seems like no one is on your side, remember this, God is on your side. And Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? He says, sir, man, I can't even get in the water. And while I'm trying to get there, somebody goes ahead of me. And Jesus speaks a word into his life. He says this, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat, and he began to walk. Listen, this is some kind of miracle. Because for 38 years, he'd been in this state. He's been an invalid. He's been crippled. And listen, I had a knee surgery some years back. And it took me three and a half months to get back to work. They told me it was gonna take me eight months to a year, but I really worked hard. But in the, in the two months where I could not work out, muscle atrophy set in. I lost all of the muscle. My whole quad muscle was gone in my right leg in just two months. And I really had to rehab to even get strength to start back walking properly. And this man has been this way for 38 years. And Jesus speaks and he can get up and walk. Just imagine the muscle atrophy for 38 years. His muscles had deteriorated, but Jesus spoke and the miracle happened. Not only could he get up and walk, but all his muscles had obviously been strengthened because he could get up, he could move, he could walk around. 38 years he'd been in this way and Jesus spoke and it came to be. He got up, he walked. This is the mercy of God. Jesus speaks because Jesus has mercy on this man. But while Jesus is showing mercy, I want you to see the madness of the religious leaders, the Jews of that day. It says this, that the day on which this took place was the Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath and the law forbids for you to carry your mat. But the man replied, hey, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick up your mat and walk? The man said, I don't know. He healed me because Jesus had slipped away. He said, I, I don't know the man. Jesus slipped away into the crowd. Jesus has mercy and the people get mad. They didn't ask him, hey man, how did you all of a sudden start walking? How did this come to be? You've been crippled or you've been down for 38 years, man. Let's rejoice together. Man, thank God for your miracle. Thank God for your healing. They were more worried about the laws than they were about the Lord healing this man. They were so religious, they didn't care about the miracle of God. And they said that this is the Sabbath. You have no right to even carry your mat. He's not doing any work. He's just getting up. He's walking away from a bad situation. He now has been healed. But they put so many laws and stipulations in place that they put man-made rules that superseded the law of God because they didn't care about man. They cared more about the law. They were bad managers of men they didn't care about the hurting people. They cared about the law. And if they didn't care if the people were in a bad state as long as they obeyed the law. But this is what Jesus said in Mark chapter 2, verse 27 about the Sabbath. 
Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Verse 28. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Jesus Christ can do a miracle on any day that he wants to because he is the Son of Man and he is Lord over the Sabbath. The Sabbath day, Jesus said, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, God gave us his day so that man can rest from his work, from his labor, so that he can reflect on the greatness of God, on the love of God, on the power of God, on the deeds of God. And here you are trying to put more pressure on the people of God. They're not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for them. Let them relax, relax. Let them rejoice. He's been healed. This is what you ought to be rejoicing about, but you're mad. Why? Because God showed mercy to an invalid. But look what the text says. Verse 14. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. As Jesus came up and Jesus giving him a warning, like, listen, I didn't heal you, but you can run around wild and sin. And don't think just because God has healed you or God has done a work in your life that you can go on and do whatever you want to do with your life and sin any way that you want to because Jesus went and found this man and said, hey, if you don't cut out this life that you're living, you, you've been down for 38 years. I've healed you. Now you're up. And if you do something else, if you continue to sin in the way that you are, something worse may happen to you. What else can worse happen to you? Listen, the, and the Bible never says that the man accepted Jesus Christ. The Bible never says that the man is saved. The Bible never says that the man will go on to be a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ. It says this, that Jesus healed him. Listen, God reigns on the just and the unjust. God does great things for people who love him and for people who despise him, for people who serve him and for people who rebel against him. God loves everybody and he does great things. He wakes up the wicked as well as he wakes up the righteous. God wakes us all up. God provides for all of us. God loves us even when we don't love him. He's faithful even when we are not faithful. Jesus found him and said, hey, will you stop this before something worse happens to you? You know what worse could happen to him? The wrath of God. Although you've been healed, you can die and go to hell and the wrath of God will be poured out on you. Listen, surrender unto God. Change your life. This is what Jesus is telling. Change your life because something worse can happen to you. And look what the man done. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. I don't know if he was being a witness for Jesus or he chose sides. He went against Jesus. But we know this, that he had an encounter with Jesus and his life was changed. For 38 years he was hurt. Listen, you may be dealing with some type of suffering for a very long time. You may be in something right now. Let me tell you, give it to God. Leave your burdens at the altar and God will lighten your load. Listen, Jesus can make a difference. If you have an encounter with Jesus, if you spend time in God's word, if you pray, if you trust, if you love, if you worship, if you obey, if you praise, I guarantee you that God will make a difference. God will change your life for the better and you will never, ever, ever be the same. In Jesus' name, you will never be the same.
And so listen, this is our midweek message. We thank God. I pray that you have received something. I pray that if you are suffering, you will surrender to God. That there's still hope. If this man can be healed after 38 years, you can be healed after however long you've been dealing and going through what you've been going through. And so listen, God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. And we thank God for you. Until next time, bye-bye.